Ever since I first discovered analog horror, I fell in love with it. It was unlike anything I had seen before. The aesthetics of the visuals and audio transported me back to a much earlier time in my life. Memories of educational VHSs from elementary school, old news broadcasts, and retro TV interfaces, all with 4x3 aspect ratios, came flooding back into my mind. Something was off, though. Small glitches here and there, and messages that just seemed... off. If nostalgia wrapped a warm blanket around me, then the uneasiness of the video made the room freezing cold. Then the real horror elements began. Distorted faces, things lurking in the woods, hidden and subliminal messages, and cosmic beings of unimaginable size and power all became elements of a short internet series whose longest video was only 5 minutes and 11 seconds long. By the time I was all caught up with the series Local 58, I thought it was one of the scariest fictional series on the internet. I knew I was hooked. The unique aesthetic of Local 58 was like a drug that I needed to find more of. Eventually I went on to discover other series which would later themselves become juggernauts of the subgenre, like Gemini Home Entertainment, The Walton Files, and The Mandela Catalog. Suddenly I realized that this was no longer some niche little internet web series. Analog horror became an established subgenre that was becoming very popular amongst those who were looking for something new. With all those eyes looking at you though, more people will start to see the cracks in the foundation. Whilst the first couple of analog horror series were received with lots of praise, it wasn't until the Mandela catalog started gaining a lot of attention did many of the criticisms of the subgenre as a whole start to carry a lot more weight. For starters, there is an issue of originality. Yes, Local 58 did feel completely original and fresh at the time, but subsequent series would have to face the question of, well, what can we do differently from Local 58? There's only so many times you can have a morally ambiguous company release retro videos that all connect with some grand conspiracy about a secret alien invasion. There are obviously many, many other smaller issues I could go into here, but the two biggest ones I really want to highlight are this. Firstly, the market was getting really oversaturated, and even to this day it still is. If you take a stroll down the analog horror subreddit, you'll see at least five people a day promoting their brand new, less than stellar series. Hell, even I incorporated elements of the subgenre into my most recent short film. The second big issue was that it just wasn't as scary anymore. People could only look at distorted human faces or listen to some reversed audio so many times before they say, this again? With all that being said, what does the future hold for analog horror? It's kind of hard to tell right now. The subgenre is in a bit of a transitional period that's come to terms with the fact that the market is oversaturated and is still figuring out what to do about it. I really hope it doesn't end here because I do still love the subgenre and there are definitely things to look forward to. Local 58 is bound to make a new video anytime now that'll have a newer digital aesthetic as shown in their last teaser for season 3. The Mandela catalog has also really picked itself up from its earlier videos. Expanding the lore of the world really helped it to start standing out better. It's taking a more unique approach to storytelling and they actually got some decent voice actors in it. Also the Backroom series is very well made and I'm excited to see where that goes. All in all though, Analog Horror is in a strange spot right now. Although I'm optimistic about the future, I do have to admit that the peak of greatness is currently behind us. And now in order for the subgenre to survive, it needs some new life kicked into it. That's not to say there's no light at the end of the tunnel, but it might be some time before we can all bask in the glory of the daylight. So until then, sit back, grab some popcorn, and don't touch that dial now. Soon enough, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program.